in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and just worship him. Everywhere, inside and outside, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Lift your hands and say, Lord, we glorify you. Something is moving. Something is changing. Your destiny is moving. There's heaven in the earth. God is working in the midst of his people. By the Holy Ghost, it's not by power, it's not by mind, it's by the agency of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Go ahead and hold the hands of your neighbor and begin to pray in tongues. If you will. Come on, pray like a general. Sing in the spirit. Make melodies of victory in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you allow the Holy Ghost to take charge of your life, listen, listen. It's one thing to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's another thing to come under his influence. Not only is the Holy Spirit living in you and around you, but he becomes your agency. The Bible says, in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. This is not just the realm of being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's the realm where you come under the influence. And it so happens that whatever spirit you allow yourself to come under its influence, the spirit begins to manifest all that it can do you. So if it's a demon of anger, for instance, the moment you allow yourself to come under its influence, not necessarily with your permission, you will begin to find expression. The Bible says Jesus so aligned to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit drove him to the wilderness. I'd like you to pray one prayer and say, Holy Spirit, I subject myself to your divine influence. He will lead you to glory. The Holy Spirit is not a demonic spirit. He will lead you to victory beyond your wildest imagination. Participate in the worship inside and outside. for when he finds you I have found my servant David and with my holy oil have I anointed him he will turn your life into a sign and wonder I'm sure of that this is a guarantee take your place take your place as it were in the cave of Adullam produce mighty men let 
let the least among us be as mighty as David. Mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important to pay attention to the progressions, the things that are happening in your spirit. Listen, Paul speaking to Timothy, he told him, he said, meditate on these things. Number one. Number two, he said, give yourself wholly. Commit yourself without reservation. He said to the end that your profiting will not just appear to you alone, but will appear to all. God wants men to see your profiting. God wants men to know that your coming every Friday is not a waste. God wants to prove a point with your life to those who think it is a waste to yield yourself to spiritual things. And he said, here's the secret. Meditate on these things. He said, give yourself holy. And he leaves you with a promise. He said, you're profiting. The benefit of what the Holy Ghost can do in the life of a man. The benefit of a transformed mind. The benefit of an anointed life will be evident. Indisputable. The Bible says that when Peter healed the man at the gate, beautiful. The people wanted to contend. But the Bible says they could not argue because a notable miracle. Notable. The end of every strife. The end of every contention is when there is a performance. When there is result. I'm not talking about one time result. God does not just give you result. He gives you the capacity to reproduce it, Satan notwithstanding. This is what authority is. Authority is the capacity to reign in the day, reign in the night, reign in the desert, reign in the river, reign on the mountain. It's a rule down. Satan notwithstanding. I always quote this scripture. The Bible says, How awe inspiring are your ways? He said, Through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through grammar, not through stories, through the greatness. This is why it's important. The Bible says, Submit yourself unto God. Then he says, resist the devil and he will flee. He didn't say, first, submit yourself. This is the secret of victory in life. You're manifesting the character of the spirit. You're manifesting the anointing of the spirit. You're manifesting the wisdom of the spirit. They looked at Jesus and said, what wisdom is this? Listen, when the Spirit of God takes hold of your life, you will do things that will scare you. You will see no mountain before you, no challenge. When men said it cannot be done, you will shatter barriers and walk as if Satan does not exist. This is the spirit of faith I want you to get. Hallelujah. One minute, lift your hands and pray and say, Lord, I know you can do more with me than you have done so far. Please use me. Do more with me. Pray. Say, Lord, I avail myself. Do more. Do more. I may not be an orator, but do something with me. I may be suffering from complex, but if you can ever do anything with me, I'm available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. This is Koinonia. May God bless you. Walk up to 10 people. Give them a spirit-filled hug. Tell them it's good to see you. Look at their faces, please. Make sure you love them. Be genuine about it. Don't tell lies. They know when you are lying.
Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. Be seated. It's good to have everyone around. It's always a blessing. I want to use this opportunity to say thank you, especially to those of you outside. I know what it means. Those inside, can you appreciate those outside? Honestly celebrate them. Hallelujah. It takes a genuine hunger for God. For you to come and find out sometimes that there are no seats. And you tell yourself, I won't deceive myself. Hallelujah. There are many people who come for meetings and find out there's no seat, there's no nothing. They say, let's go back. And they carry their trouble, their mindsets and go back and remain where they are. It takes a level of desperation. The woman said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. She was determined. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to have everyone around. I bless God for what he's doing in this place. And I hope you have the grace to see and celebrate when you see God doing great things. Not just by clapping, but telling him thank you. I always tell people, if I had the opportunity to receive what some of us are receiving free of charge without paying for it, I assure you, I would have been 10 times better than I am right now. Hallelujah. What some of you are getting at a platter of gold came under tears, blood, fastings, persecutions that you cannot imagine. I hope that you will value it. Hallelujah. The beauty of leadership is that you reduce the journey for others. If it took me 10 years to get to this level, I should shorten your journey to take two years. This is how you multiply your success. That's why we are giving everything without hiding. But the Bible says, do not cast your pearl before swine. We are not asking you to pay for it. We are only asking you to value it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Among the many things that we thank God for doing in our midst, uh, four major things. I call them our core values. And I've preached this for years. It's important to know what you, we want you to become. When you enter a university system, for instance, you are given an idea of what you will become at the end of your program. Hallelujah. In the corporate world, we call it the law of clarity. When you state very clearly the things that you want, you give people a mental picture of what you believe they would become. Hallelujah. And we seek to do four major things in this place. Number one, to communicate the love of Jesus. That everyone who comes out from among us, the first thing we want the world to see in your life is not power, it's not healing, it's love that comes with the presence of God. Write it. That's our number one core value. Love. Love. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, not when you are called apostle or prophet. Love. Love is a symbol of God's presence. It's a symbol of maturity in the spirit. Number two, character. What we seek to impart in you is character. Character. Hallelujah. Not only do we want people who have the love of God in them, but men and women who are furnished, like Prof said, character. That's the second core value that we have in this place. Everything we do is around these decisions. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the place of the anointing. We believe that without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to really be transformed and be equipped and to face the pressures and the challenges of life and establish the kingdom of heaven here in the earth. So the anointing. Number four, excellence. It's our job not just to make anointed and careless and nonchalant people like we have in our society. Anointed men of God who are careless, nonchalant, but we want people who are excellent. Say after me, excellence. It's my heart desire every time I pray for you. I pray these four things. 
and I say, Lord, put upon your people the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. Where you become so skilled, you become so competent, and you notice that all the messages that we preach are centered around and honor these core values. Hallelujah. We are not confused about what we want you to become. We are not just guessing. Uh, 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 uh. It's a map. Are you listening to me? We are following a definite blueprint. There is a spiritual curriculum we are following. If we follow it diligently, you will become it at the end. This is called vision. Hallelujah. For the Bible says, write the vision. He said what? Make it plain. That's what I'm doing right now. I do it all the time. So that you know, as I'm coming for Koinonia, I'm not just going to church. See it like a school. See it like a training ground. If someone asks you, okay, so what are you going to achieve at the end of two or three years or four years? If you cannot tell them the end of it, you've been wasting your time. Please go and sleep. Hallelujah. You should know what you will become so that you can expect it and you can track your progress. Are you listening to me? So that when it is raining, for instance, and you come outside and you have to stand in the rain, you say, rain, you can follow me. This principle I'm learning will make this be the last time that this rain will ever fall on me. It's better for it to fall on you once than to fall on you forever because of not listening. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, they know not, neither do they understand. They said they grope in darkness. And as a result, the earth is out of course. He said, but have I not said, ye are gods? And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. And so you must understand that when it comes to hearing the word of God, keep the issue of luxury aside. Hello? Can you hear me inside and outside? Keep that issue of, is there fan? Is there AC? We believe in excellence, but you must realize that you are a general on training. Are you listening to me? And nobody who is trained, the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with activities of civilians. It will cost you. It will cost you your transport. It will cost you tears. I will shout at you. I will rebuke you. You will not like me, but I won't stop until something, hallelujah, comes out of your destiny. Praise the Lord. So core value number one, help me. Number one, this is what we want you to become. Number two, character. Number three, the anointing. We believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Don't just say it's for them. Number four, excellence. Say after me, excellence very important thank you jesus for what you are doing we thank you for the gift of vision and we thank you because we can structurally build people and make them wonders even like david the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord all right bring out something to write please stop bringing can i have this buy something like this hallelujah Please, buy a very good notebook. That no matter how careless you are, you won't tear it around. So that you can document some of these things. Hallelujah. Many of you are always writing. But when we say write, you just search your pocket and check and bring out one paper. That you wrote list to go to the... You won't... Whatever you do not value, you won't attract to your life. Hallelujah. Whatever you dishonor repels you. Praise God. Write the following words down. Thank you, Jesus. Number one, mediocrity. Write the following words down. One, mediocrity. What does it mean to be a mediocre? It means to be ordinary. It means to be of moderate quality. To be of moderate quality. Another definition. Mediocrity means it's neither good 
nor bad. It's not spectacular, but it's not wrong anyway. Barely adequate. Barely adequate. Common. Inferior. These are the words that describe what it means to live in mediocrity or to be a mediocre. I'll come again because I want you to get it. Hallelujah. You see, let me teach you something. We're going to teach it in the Bible school. It's called homiletics. That's the theological name. The art of preaching. Repent from this jargon kind of preaching that people do. No, 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 no. And people are nodding. You are not getting anything. At the end of it, what did you get? You are not being changed. If that's how your lecturer teaches you, I assure you, you will never graduate. See, the goal of teaching, I'm not preaching. Are you listening to me? To preach means to declare. To teach means to explain. There is a difference. Preaching gives you knowledge. Teaching gives you understanding. The word of God is taught. The gospel is preached. So for many of you who just go, nah, 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 you're just rapping and ranting. Uh -uh, calm down. Are the people following? If you leave the people more confused, you ended up wasting their time and their destinies. Hallelujah. That's why I'm taking it slowly because I really want you to get this. Have you written the first word? So what does it mean? Ordinary, of moderate quality. Write down the second word. Indifference. Indifference. Those of you outside, the Lord will bless you. I'm seeing you from here and I'm telling you, my, see, I look forward to a big auditorium, mighty auditorium, where there will be light everywhere. And those of you who are doubting will not be there. Oh yes, that's what they told, that's what he told. He said you will see it, but you eat of it. When Prof was saying, ah, one of the best institutes, some of you are saying, ah, really? It's not your fault you're a student when we are done with you we'll kick out that mindset in jesus name so write quickly indifference it means lack of interest please take note of that word we'll be discussing it seriously today lack of interest number two it means lack of concern lack of sympathy lack of interest lack of concern lack of sympathy another word nonchalance i mean another definition of indifference nonchalance nonchalance it's what nigerians call i don't care attitude don't write that don't write that you're a leader don't write that i'm just helping you understand say i'm a leader say it i'm a leader indifference the third word excellence write down this word excellence what does it mean the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of having superior merit to be of superior merit being exceptional surpassing ordinary standards i like that surpassing ordinary standards that's what it means to be excellent surpassing ordinary standards being extraordinary in other words above the ordinary possessing the highest or finest quality excellence write down the last word change c-h-a-n-g-e change 
it means to transform or to convert change change means to transform it means to convert it means to become different or to undergo an alteration change means to become different or undergo an alteration to be altered thank you jesus hallelujah now our discussion tonight is going to be around these four words and please i pray with all my heart and i'm still praying to god as i'm standing here that within these few minutes i will wrestle something in your mind and shake out anything that is not of god and if you believe that say amen, amen. hallelujah i'm teaching tonight on dominion through excellence dominion through excellence dominion through excellence the greatest enemy that I found in my life and from the word of God the greatest enemy of excellence is an attitude of indifference the greatest hindrance the greatest enemy to a life of excellence is indifference hallelujah and now look up please everybody now you can look up let me teach you why when you examine the body of christ you find out that we covered a bit of that in our full gospel series you can get the teachings very important but you find out that in the body of christ there is an emphasis on what i want to call the spiritual side of life hallelujah every sunday you just stand on the road and you see people moving from place to place ask them where am i going to say church say for what say to worship what does that mean i don't know and they are moving and so you have people who are moving from one place to the other and suddenly when two people are gisting when they step into church they stop talking they assume uh what do we call it now an attitude a sacred attitude and they sit down and now the pastor sits down and just discusses and then just gets up and changes his form and comes up and begins to preach and talk and everybody just sits down and behaves himself then we end the service by sharing the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god be with us now and forevermore amen and everybody resumes to what they want to call what they are normal lives hallelujah and now the tragedy that has happened in the body of christ is that we have taught because of certain revelations like the favor of god the sovereignty of god the mercy of god um destiny help us you know powerful teachings like this we have had a lot of emphasis on these teachings and it has really not helped the body in some measures because it has brought people to a point where certain things like competence certain things like excellence certain things like diligence certain things like determination certain things like knowledge study um, hard work and so on and so forth is no longer respected hallelujah why should i be diligent when overnight god can give me houses i did not build hallelujah why should i be diligent when i can just sit down and i can't speak english but then i can find myself in in the television ministry and i can heal the sick hallelujah why should i be excellent and you know the sad thing is this let me tell you where that error came from many men of god left everything to go into a genuine pursuit for god are you listening to me they cut themselves away from society the bible says through desire proverbs 18 verse 1 a man having separated himself he said 
he intermeddled with all wisdom and so in the course of the sacrifice to get the anointing you hear people talk of 100 days of prayer and fasting one year two years ten years like paul in the wilderness of arabia and so on and so forth now when ministers get the anointing listen to me and then they also have character when they come up they find out that ah uh -uh, you know people are coming there are crowds coming because people have needs and if you can meet that need you become a magnet people will keep coming hallelujah they can criticize you but they will still come hallelujah are you listening to me but then that's not the issue the major issue is that when that begins to happen now the man of god begins to talk and he tells the people i didn't read any book i didn't study anything i didn't learn anything all i did was what i pursued god and i prayed and out of that i built an excellent ministry correct now that's not wrong because that's how he came but then the danger is if he does not contend for higher knowledge in the realm of the spirit he will begin to model a portrait of how he got to the position he was and begin to teach people are you listening to me he begins to tell people look all these books they are jargons just forget about it and now you have a church that is anointed excellent man of god but is a bad leader are you listening to me wonderful person but you find out that there are all kinds of cases they don't know who keeps the offering in the church the pastor collects hundred thousand offering he kept it in his drawer later he came and found ten thousand he said who carried it because he does not know that there are principles of corporate financing for instance and he doesn't see the need for it are you listening to me now he knows that people are coming but he forgets that the people are human beings only because they want the anointing so they can stand he said let, let them keep standing if they really want to be blessed after all in the days of Catherine kuman people waited from this to this so certain principles listen to me that can prepare us to contend with our society and the 21st century is not taught and built in people are you listening to me and people have been taught that when you follow certain principles of life and success and achievement and the rest it is you are reducing your spiritual journey so they tell people forget it all that is there is fast and pray i assure you once you can kick away satan your destiny will open now the people go through every deliverance. They pray in tongues for years and they find out that this equation is not adding up. Are you listening to me? And tonight I want to help us that there is an aspect of dominion that can only happen through excellence. Praise the Lord. Dominion through excellence. Jesus gave us a command. What we call the great commission. Unfortunately, the message of the great commission even by many evangelists have been misunderstood because jesus gave us a commandment he said go ye into all the world you can get our teaching conquering cosmos the word there is cosmos the word there is not just two people sitting down who are drinking go into all the social system the strata and the sphere of society I told you that the gospel is not just a message the gospel is a value system are you listening to me the gospel is not just a message it's an ideology it's a value system that seeks to enthrone jesus and his principles and his culture first in your life and across every sphere of influence are you understanding me this is the gospel jesus left when jesus walked upon the earth he affected people and society the reason why our gospel is powerless is because number one we do not understand the great commission number two we do not understand the components that make the great commission work number three we we are not interested to pay the price and make sure that we have those components working in our lives say amen so there is a place for anointing there is a place for prayer there is a place for fasting there is a place for knowledge there is a place for wisdom there is a place for excellence there is a place for character 
See, the truths in the Bible were not supposed to substitute one another. They were supposed to complement one another. When you begin to substitute one truth with another, you are going to land into error. The truth of God's word, where if it is in the Bible, it was not meant to substitute another. It was meant to complement. Hallelujah. So we have a society that cannot match the challenges that come. And the, the terrible thing about it, listen to me. Listen to me. Is that many of our mentors and our fathers and our leaders and our role models have not created a true picture of leadership. They have only created a true picture of pastoral ministry. Are you listening to me? So you see someone who God is calling into the area of business behaving like a pastor. Because that's all he has seen and learned. Are you listening to me? And we tell people that progress in the spirit is when you become a pastor. Wrong. Wrong. God's idea was not to raise pastors. I hope you understand that the fivefold ministry was not God's original agenda. It came as a result of the fall of man. So he had to give gifts to men. Ephesians 4 from verse 10 to 12. The Bible says when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. Some first apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors. And they have an assignment for the equipping of the saints. That they the saints will come to a point of maturity and do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? The great commission invade cosmos with the value system of heaven there are many christians who are born again but they have not been taught that the message that jesus brought was not a religious message he came with an ideology he came with a value system that means if you embrace jesus and his message and his principles you should become something hallelujah predictable Unfortunately, what we teach in church is potent enough to raise people from wheelchairs, but not potent enough to produce leaders and produce champions and world changers, men and women who can take charge of society. So we have the church there healing the sick and raising people from crutches. Wonderful. But go to every office. You see unbelievers there. In the Senate, unbelievers there. And believers are suffering and the kingdom is not truly advancing motion without progress hallelujah and every time all we know to do is oh satan satan is behind your life if you can get this devil i promise you everything in your life will change i beg to defer that that is not completely true we preach we set people free here but let me tell you the truth sometimes many people call and say ah but they prayed for me and I don't feel those demonic influences but my life has not moved forward because you see it, success is a component of many factors impartation is only one of the components success is an equation with many variables that equal success these things have not been taught in church I told you to write four words we are going to discuss them the most dangerous of all of them is that word called indifference you know what indifference is look up please you know what indifference is indifference is a state of lack of interest and non-challenge there are many people who hear this message right now and just shut down and say this kind of thing i thought we were going to talk on the seven planes of entering the seven dimension in the realm of the spirit hold on hold on Because the first shock I need you to know is that those who God is sending you to are not born again. Are you listening to me? They don't speak in tongues. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They do not respect the value system of the kingdom. And so your first interaction with cosmos will not be your praying tongues. Your first interaction will be the spirit of excellence. Write this because I want to challenge you tonight. I really want to challenge you. Indifference. I don't care. 
there are many believers who do not see a need there's no pressure to upgrade their lives to move from where they are to where god wants them to be indifference the greatest killer we preach about lust we preach about fornication we preach about all of these things wonderful these things are bad but let me tell you we must also preach about all these other things like indifference do you know that when jesus challenged the laodicean church in revelations one of his challenge towards them was indifferent he said you are neither was it the laodicean church one of the seven churches he said you are neither what hot nor how can a man be neither hot nor cold so you are standing neutral that state of being neither hot nor cold does not mount pressure in your spirit you are not extreme in anything hallelujah so if people criticize this side you can identify with them if they criticize this side you can identify with them and that's the most comfortable position in life mediocrity indifference many of us are here and when you hear messages like this you just sit down and be wondering is he really talking about me or some other people indifference it has killed the church we have no voice hallelujah there are many people today listen to me who are unemployed in nigeria not because of satan because they do not understand the principles that will get them from where they are into a great place i tell you the truth many people are not honest because in nigeria we love transferring responsibilities it was not my fault my stupid father took me to a herbalist look at where i am now what did he do about it nothing so we love it when we transfer responsibility and blame hallelujah we love it when we spiritualize everything and cover for any lapse on our own part praise god this is very very important and i get very irritated when i see people not teaching the body of christ all of the principles that are supposed to equip them the bible says that the house he said come and i will show you the bride the lamb's wife and he took me and showed me a city and heavenly jerusalem he said it lieth four square the length the breadth and the height were equal in other words there are many components that make a complete christian and a good preacher and a good leader must be able to expose all the people to all of those components so that there will be a holistic building you don't just have prayer warriors who are broke failures in life or anoint or prosperous people who are victims of satan or anointed people who are bad fathers bad mothers you change a mind you change a man by changing his value systems his mindset hallelujah that's why wicked men like adolf hitler and all these great men they not only kill people they sought to introduce new value systems that's what they call brainwashing you know what brainwashing is they give you a new value system that can make you look at your blood mother who gave birth to you and you have another value system that is that does not even have respect for her value system and many of you may not realize we are there clapping and throwing people under the anointing in church and satan is infiltrating everywhere with a value system hallelujah gradually they are kicking anything that looks like God out of schools, out of everything. Are you aware of that? Let me tell you the truth. Those who wanted to do that had that agenda since. But they knew that some of them needed to become authorities in their field. So that they can gain the required influence to carry out that wicked agenda. And for decades they paid the price with that singular vision. Are you listening to me? What you see happening to the world today was a decision that people set and they paid the price for years 
not in the body of Christ. We just teach people that you get born again, receive the impartation and go. In China today, China has a dream of becoming the world superpower. And let me tell you something, the only person who can stop them is God. Are you listening to me? You go and read the history of China. And they came with certain leaders. And the leaders began to put a new value system in the people. They looked at their statistics and knew that the way Chinese people were giving birth anyhow, very soon, the country was going to have a problem. And they began to come up with measures of birth control using flamboyant advertisement that changed the mindset of people. And attracting a lot of people, giving them a lot of things. Hallelujah. And then they started encouraging industrialization among their people. Are you listening to me? They started letting them see how much a Chinese product is better than any other product in the world. And listen, they drafted strategies to put that mindset even in a little Chinese boy. A little Chinese person, although he cannot speak English, he has self-confidence more than a lot of people. A system. Hallelujah. And right now, China produces a lot of things. Many Nigerians run and produce inferior goods and run back into the country because of a country that can believe themselves. And the last time I checked Forbes' list of most influential men, President Obama was not number one. Because certain people have an agenda and they are pressing towards it. But when you come to the church, if we listen, listen to me Christians. A great man called Matthew Ashimo Lowo, KICC. When he went to London, he found out that although we were colonized by the British, he saw that there was still that element of racism in the place. And the blacks, a lot of people, some run from Lagos, follow through bridge, follow through everywhere, not by Plano. They get to London through all kinds of ways. And they survive there. They catch them. They jail them for six months. After six months, they bring them and they are roaming on the street. And he looked at these people and saw a depraved people that did not believe in themselves. And he says, I will change these people. And he set up his ministry and brought them. He began to teach them certain principles. After a few years, over seven, right now as I speak to you, over 60 to 70 percent of the people in his church own conglomerates and a lot of things the moment that happened the british government started noticing him because they started commanding influence they own the companies they own the banks they own the media and so you cannot have this kind of influence and not meet with the leaders and the kings that influence the minds of the people are you listening to me systemic invasion not just I receive I receive train people teach them give them the mindset build them I guarantee you you will fire them like the foxes that Samson set on fire and left them the Bible did not say he came to supervise them he just set the foxes on fire two by two and released them and the Bible says they devoured the farm of the Philistines Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Dominion through excellence. Lots of people do not, we don't care about excellence. It's not your fault. You were not taught. We the leaders who God has anointed have been there trying to look for money, trying to look for fame, trying to look for power, trying to go on air, trying to bring ridiculous projects that God did not send us to do. And we will not concentrate. He said, who are these? He said, what is this that you see? He said, four horns. He said, these horns have risen to judge Judah. He said, but I will send carpenters. 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 What is the work of a carpenter? To construct. And so God sends us as carpenters. And we begin to train men who will judge these horns. The Bible says in Obadiah 21, it says, And saviors shall arise out of Zion and shall judge the Mount of Esau. 
Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If all you keep getting every week in Koinonia is falling on the floor or hands lay, being laid on you, I assure you, you will hate me in the next 10 years because you will see men who didn't pray like you, who didn't fast like you, but you are now moving around with CVs, praying in tongues for jobs in their own companies. Are you listening to me? That's what we have in church. So a lot of believers are confused. They cannot understand why a man who does not love God, sleeping with ladies all around, but he's the one who owns Virgin Atlantic. I didn't say that, oh, it's an example. Before you, you go and write on newspaper that Joshua Selman said, no, 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 example. Hallelujah. Or you find out that every believer we are just praying, praying, and somebody says, hallelujah. The Lord showed me that soon we'll have a TV ministry. And the man claps. He says, am I not a prophet? Shame on him. What of the owner of the TV ministry? Who can kick your program out at any time? Why not train people and teach them the principles? Challenge and inspire people. Release an anointing and release knowledge and understanding in them. Let somebody rise and own a television station. Let somebody rise and, and put a software that before it works, it must say a scripture. You must listen to it. You should know me by now. As you are clapping, I hope you are getting it. Hallelujah. Now, every time we say this thing, people just say, whoa. But I, indifference. After people say, they just say, Kai, this message was very nice. What are you doing about it? Hallelujah. I don't see limits in my life. I, I'm telling you. See, this is my mindset. I don't see limits. You never, never will come and find me putting my hand like this. And you say, why? I say, Kai, I'm thinking of, I'm always optimistic. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. Look at lots of graduates in Nigeria. They love God. They were presidents of fellowships. But they were only taught the side of the anointing. Now, they go for a job interview. There's nobody to lay hands on. And they have to queue. A long queue. They were not taught principles. How to, how to do a lot of things. They have no character. They, have, they don't understand the principles. There are many people who, are, who get jobs. And for years they are not promoted. And they get angry. Because they lack the necessary knowledge. To leave the stage where they are. And go beyond. And they think the remedy is just prayer. And they keep praying, praying. And God leads them to a book and they look. They say, no, no. This guy, I know him. He's, he's, not, he's not a fiery person. Let me ask you a question. How has your life been so far? Is there anything that inspires you? There are names that when you call, you call names that are very nice. Look at the sound that we are using. Because of this mic, many people have gotten healed. Many people have gotten blessed. The media is streaming right now. There's Facebook and Twitter. This was somebody who believed himself enough to get up and take influence. Excellence at all times. See, the spirit of excellence is not about money. This is what I want you to get. A lot of people have given excuses as to why their lives are the way they are. They say, if only I had more money. Koinonia, say you are rich. That's why you can do everything. It's a spirit. It's a culture. It's an attitude. Excellence is not just about money. It's about a spirit. I know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all. They are anointed they are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are not excellent. The quality of being outstanding. The quality of being thorough. Write it, thorough. Many people are not thorough in their lives. You are studying a principle. You are not thorough. We like stopping halfway. 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 We don't ask the right questions. 
we don't pay the price to stay long enough we are always in a hurry no thoroughness that's the result lack of excellence someone wants to learn keyboard he just learned something small. You start roaming around and telling everybody, I can play. The fact that they are not attending to you is a message. Get angry and go back. Let me tell you something. Excellence defies religion. It defies gender. It defies race and ethnicity. You meet an excellent man. He will break any barrier in life. I was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady, Nigerian lady, Hallelujah. On KICC. And I think she's one of the editors of these great magazines. And when she was speaking, I, could, I, I sat down and I felt like a child. I said, Lord, I need to rise beyond this level I am. I am where I am today because of the degree of value I have placed on excellence. If I step higher, I will rise higher than this. There are many preachers. And you know, let me tell you the thing about results and excellence. Every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward, you will be angry. When I drive a golf and I bring here, there are many of you who will see, you are happy because it's consoling your present position. But if I step in here with a Lincoln Navigator, people will start talking. Some of you say, ah, me, this kind of shady success, I'm not sure. We always want people to do things that keep us comfortable. The moment they begin to do things that challenge you, you try to find excuses. See, it's not every power you see that you look at, oh, forget about these people. Let me tell you something about my life, and I say this with all humility. I pray, I fast, but let me give you a bit of my personal life. Listen, every single day, Every single day, I do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership, on finance, on entrepreneurship. Are you listening to me? Many people just think I'm just standing and God anointed me. Get the anointing and go. Are you listening to me? I don't do that. In my laptop right now, I have Christ Embassy Pastoral Course. The whole series. This is not even something that is given anyhow. I made sure I got it. I'm listening to it. Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sonia Delaja and the Jesus He Never Knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's Five Levels of Leadership, I saw it, I bought it. What are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion? Many of you are waiting. The day my brother rise, he will remember me. And then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there. Say this brother self. What is the benefit of an elder brother? Is it not to take some of us? Don't start doing something about your life. We are always waiting for somebody to pick us. When will you start carrying others? Every day. Are you listening to me? In my system right now, I was given Global Leadership Summit for last year, 2012. I have it. And I've been listening to it. Some of the brilliant Christian minds in leadership across the whole world. When I listen to the first one, I put my hand on my head. I got down on my knees. I felt ashamed of myself. I said, Joshua Selma, what have you been doing? I'm sure many of you are surprised now. That's how, that's how you'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. Them too, they are surprised when they listen to somebody else. Join the flow. Don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking. Because very soon, all you'll see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher, there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things? What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic take. 
and you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting Koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. Your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are. I don't care who that person is. My father told me something years ago. He said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. Your friend loves you the way you are. He won't hurt you because he values your relationship. But your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive. I refuse to remain where I am. I refuse. There are things I do all the time. Let me hurry up. I have so much, I have so much to share. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following, right? To achieve excellence in life, I will not be small in the name of Jesus Christ I have found my way out of mediocrity in life I'm telling you I found my way I know it I've seen the door I found my way out of average I found myself out of mediocrity no competition I found my way to be the best and be the greatest in life this is not pride this is the truth this is what knowledge does to you intimidation is because you do not know your way out for when you know what you have and when you see that door that has been set before you you will rise up like a champion oh i'll never be a failure this is not a confession it's the truth i found my way out of certain things forever satan notwithstanding I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akbami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win. Powerful book. There are some battles that Satan has lost before he started. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Koinonia will keep rising. No, no. It's, no, this is not the issue of amen. The grace of God is there. And there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria. It has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life and you just look at people and say, just hold on. It's just a matter of time. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me in 2007 i was in port Harcourt. i was taking care of someone in the house where i was staying in the hospital ust the highest floor i was there suddenly i looked outside through the mirror and i was taken in the vision and i saw the international headquarters of eni i opened my mouth I said is this on earth i saw 38 flags different nations of the world but listen i would have easily laid down and say i saw it i tell you the truth i would have died without seeing it many of you have seen many things from the day you were born how old are you now almost 40. nothing has changed every time
time you are stuck in life, realize that it's a sign that what you know so far has ex is exhausted. Hallelujah. Dr. Lukoya said something one time I was listening and he said something very powerful. He said, that's what Prof said. He said, you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it. Are you listening to me? In other words, if you are in level 8 and you find a problem in level 8, you need knowledge higher than level 8 to ever go in life. There are many people who, members, they get to 100 members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting, they don't break that 100 member barrier. They remain there. So they just say, that's how God wants it. Or forget to, anytime you see crowd anywhere, look at the man, look at his eyes very well. Holy God knows what has happened immediately he's talking somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him and you will see the same people who he has been trying and begging see brothers and sisters anytime you are stuck in life don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead your criticism will not stop them join the train and get out of your present predicaments hallelujah Say, I'll never be a failure in life. Say, I'll never be small. Say it. Stop all this false humility. Say it. I refuse to be small in life. I'm telling you. I'm speaking to your spirit. Refuse it. Commit yourself to excellence. Be thorough. Be thorough. Be thorough. Don't leave your life to chance. Be thorough. What gift has God given you? The Bible says, Proverbs 31, verse 31. It says, many daughters have done well. But you, your excellence has brought you above them. It says, many daughters have done well. Many bankers have done well. Many media giants have done well. Many preachers have done well. Many businessmen have done well. It says, but you, excellence them all. See, let me tell you the truth. What you see in Koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday. You wait and see my mindset of today. What you are seeing today is not our mindset of today. This is old wine. I tell you the truth. This is old wine. This was the mindset we were preparing for when we were at the back of chapel. You hold on and see. For there, Let me tell you, God is alert and active watching over his word. He's watching obedient people. When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploits, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one. When God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Right? Exposure. Exposure. Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. If you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows, your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there. Hallelujah. I was in secondary school. Our secondary school is not like your own. The one you went to. Where you ate yam and chicken. I never ate chicken in secondary school. Just one, Hanagama. I never ate chicken. Hallelujah. Not once. But, listen, but we were local champions around our local government. I mean, if we came to do debate with your school, you are, you are gone. Just start crying. Hallelujah. We had a debate with Jake's school. We came and came them those times. Ah, it was a delightsome experience. Ladies looked at us. They are ladies. We were winning those times. But 
We remain at that level until we met another school. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. God will expose you to something. Listen. Exposure, those three, those three things. Number one, the power of exposure. One, it takes you beyond your present horizon. It shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen. Exposure challenges you. Exposure provokes you. Sometimes, exposure embarrasses you. And these are all tools that God uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life. Hallelujah. Exposure. For instance, you never knew. There's one song, um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for a ministration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people. And it was wonderful. And I went there and the people treated me so well. And then there, it was a youth meeting then, but there are or God, quarter, quarter, their prophet or their bishop or something. He said he wanted to have dinner with me. So you know in my mind, what is dinner? What is dinner? What have you been eating as dinner? Two or something or this and that and that. So I went, was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there, I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything that I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point. So I sat down. And I saw things I didn't know what they were. I saw a pack. I didn't know it was milk inside. You, we only know milk in tin. Correct? You are laughing. Which one have you seen? So I didn't know it was liquid milk inside. And I behaved myself. I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking. And then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing. So I assumed that I was the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit. You know, they won't ask you too many questions. So I was behaving. And I was watching what they were doing. I learned numerous lessons when I was watching. I was seeing everything. I would have fumbled, disgraced myself, disgraced ENI, left a bad reputation. When I saw that thing, what happened? Say after me, exposure. Say it, exposure. I said, Lord, thank you that it happened with just three or four people. When I went back, I sat down on my laptop. I browsed everything about table etiquette, kinds of food, how to behave, courses of meal and everything. Because I'm making way for the blessing. You know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Not just, ah, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies, you know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. 
the first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food there. For some of you, from that time till now, you have been living in deceit. May God take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, exposure. Prepare. Look up, please. I'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence. You prepare. Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why did, when did they start doing this? Hallelujah. One day now, you will now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never live your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself, embrace the exposure, and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, there's turkey. They say, no, no, it's not turkey, it's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me again. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? Or this is an insurance company? You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that it's your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting. The people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. Many of you do not want to train yourself. You don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please, let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. Hallelujah. 
you go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor, everybody is clapping you, you are sitting down. They will say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world that there is a way. See, listen, it's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, you see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind. And she comes and you are there seated. And many guys are just coming. You say, all right. So this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing they show, the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you to rise higher and this leads to the next point determination because of the pain of the embarrassment you had you will vow a vow that nobody needs to supervise you tell yourself it will never happen again i was told one day that there are some guys young guys are like claiming us in this kind you know young guys when they see an elderly woman they like claiming look i'm responsible i can take care of your daughter and so the, the car had a problem and they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jump start it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young men, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said, confidently, say, please, enter and help me, you know, an old woman I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Oh boy, you shall be drive the other one said, no, you go. If I ask you why can't why can't you drive? You say because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister, what can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him. And kill him. What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him? And the guy has not come. I say, Lord, I'm warning you now. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure. And have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant. Nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you. Nothing changed. Is the rice that is overnight by 1 p.m. you are still selling yesterday's rice i will never come and eat in your restaurant whether you are a member of koinonia it doesn't matter what department you are functioning i won't come and eat because i have only one body and i need to take care of it if you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers you say i'm available available music artist I was listening to a lady today top sticks they call her ah i put my hand on my head do you know her how many of you know her yet you see i'm a drummer say i saw myself in the dream playing drums don't just let dreams deceive you it takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm Am I challenging you? I watched this lady 
I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It would have challenged you, sisters. There is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers. The same way some people are begging for jobs. Certain people, see, I learned a lesson in life. I'm still coming back for banks. Banks, I'm coming back for you in the future. I applied for a loan in 2008. The banks did this. They looked at me, looked at me, sized me and, and drove me out. I said, no problem. A day will come. It will be members of Koinonia that will have that bank. That, that, that was no Koinonia then, E and I. When they have it, I can walk in. There's what we call human capital, not land. You are the capital. So I said, if I don't have land, I will become the capital. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. Become equal to a nation, one man. Pastor Tunde Bakare was preaching. A bank abroad called him and they were begging him. They said, please collect a loan of $10 million. They were begging him. He said, what for? He said, please just take it. They said, because they are afraid of the recession. So they are looking for human beings that control influence. So that they will collect loans. So it can keep the bank stable. Are you listening to me? So people like Adeboy and the rest now. If he comes for loan, he is equal. Look at Redeem. Can they make one bank? Or how many banks? So they will say, please, Papa, collect money from us. Some of us are begging and say, give us money. Say, wait, wait. Uh, you have to present this and that. I said no problem it's not your fault i don't have land but i can have what i said i'm coming this is the right thing you would do this thing for this one that you do i'm coming back and i said a day will come on my table will be many offers from banks i said the problem is that we are blessed let me just pray for you is it not increase you want oh it will happen it will happen It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious. You say, mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matua Shimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now, he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house. And in 30 days, they completed it. Plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died, yet the building has not increased. Now, let's visit that word I wrote. Change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, that means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. It's their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble over others is their mindsets. And I want you to live where you are today and rise there's always backbiting there's nothing called front biting backbiting is for those who are far behind who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are change listen there are a few things i've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this i wrote reactions that for on change number one refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation that means why you need to remain there there are many of us when you hear a word like this it will embarrass you it will sting your ego that's what is happening to many of us 
you are angry, you wish you can flog me. That's why you are not sitting here. And now you are just saying, oh God, this guy, why is he saying this thing now? There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken or you can stand and give excuses and say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time will tell who is right. Me, I will keep my prayer. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. <laughs> you better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what we are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say it's the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly for something very small like keeping this bible here you say is this where it's supposed to be you know that the real thing is not the bible there's it's a cumulative of something you watch your friend on news you just start getting angry and see all these people they now pretend as if they don't know us the truth is he has forgotten about you let me just tell you the truth because they don't look back leaders look forward so if you ever want the people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh-uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, hey, I knew it won't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shebi, I, I told you, Abi. Indifference. After you refuse, then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am, is not good enough what happens the third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast so that people will not know cheap routes unfortunately there are no cheap routes in life it's only in advertisement i have one this thing on my phone he said marriage instant no dues so he wrote he said there's no marriage instant no dues it's in america they do that Oh, I love you. You love me. Let's marry. They just get one priest from somewhere. Just comes out from somewhere and just join the people. Two weeks later, you look at them and say, How are you? I'm not doing it again. He doesn't love me. Oh. I don't love you. What, did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We are not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me for the state conference from my hotel room, the two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start. Because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So, a day will come we'll share that one. Praise God. 
sure that day some of you will just stand up and say, just walk away. <laughs> Negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then, maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down and everybody is looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He said, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he says, no, 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 you got 0, please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right, I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever, God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching, you need to change it. Something is wrong. And they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say, Kai, if I change this thing now, it's as good as dying. Hallelujah. Or your father beats your mother. Two of them do and go and they go to church. And then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says, there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he said, you know, say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change, battling with change, doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember? Please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you match somebody. The person says, sister, you match me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life, one, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three, set goals. Set goals on what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellence, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them, who is your role model? They just say, Timaya. 
ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. You say you are an artist. Say, wonderful. So, tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. Say, me, oh. The way I do my things, even me, I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now, many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question, you want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. He looks popular, but he did not come from God. He doesn't produce successful people. You want to own an airline like which one you don't know i assure you you won't arrive i watched one cartoon growing up called alice in wonderland fantasies that happen in one wonderland that's how many people are living <laughs> you ask them they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you you won't get there look at me i want to ask two people randomly brother stand up you stand up what do you want to become in life don't shout me. come and tell me you don't, you don't need to tell everybody none of their business all right this is why you are here may god bless you for your honesty are you seeing that he said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say because you sit down and act like you know how about you sir okay. i want to be a solution to you want to be a solution to the world Ick. No, no, don't laugh. Hold on. This is a school. You want to be a solution to the world. That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that what you see what you are receiving in this place, guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists. Look for them. You find a particular biochemist. He has probably written books. He probably has videos on YouTube. Go to engineering faculty in the night. Pay the price and download it. And start listening. You will get their mindsets. Before you know it, you will rise above ABU. Rise above Zaria. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I, I never will be limited with this environment. Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What, is it God, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings whether ministers meeting whether um um hod's or escorts or whatever the f we discuss it i tell them why this ministry exists in one sentence i can tell you what we are here to do periodically i remind all the leaders we are not existing to do everything there are many preachers go and ask them why did you start your church Say, well, an angel appeared. It was on the 20th. Why did you start your church? Say, the angel told me, he said, now this day I have commissioned. Why did you start your church? Little wonder people are committed in your church. They come and go because there is no definition of vision. They don't know what they are going to become. Why did you start your church? Now you started a prayer group. Even if it started supernaturally, eventually you go and ask God. He said, now Lord, people are coming in this prayer group. Where are we going to? 
you are just praying with a sister praying with a sister where are you going to do you like her? are you starting the ministry together are you prayer partners vision define it we be praying every day and the sister is saying so what's the next instruction God is giving you are saying let's just keep praying what, where are you going nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going I assure you so set goals set goals in the area of finances there are people that I model their lives in the area of ministry there are people I model their life in the area of leadership there are people I plan to be higher when you go to my place you see above my television I put my picture there people think it's just for entertainment no it's prophetic because I'm saying it I'm saying whatever I see on this television the hand of God will take me above it and then you see books there some of you when we get there it's just dreams you write wishes useless wishes that may never come to pass the only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry that's good but that's not enough you even draw the person his eyelashes must be wide and rich here apply that same principle for your life and destiny or the brother she must be this me i won't take anything joshua selman has taught us excellence i won't take anything then you too, you better work to match the excellence you want. There are many brothers here. You want a beautiful sister. Every time you come, you just look at her. Just turn, worship team. You are just looking. You are not organized. You are not well behaved. You are not well cultured. You are not disciplined. You have no vision. You are not doing anything about your life. They say, who do you want? One day you even meet your friend and say, I've been thinking about something. You better stop thinking. You better stop thinking. Quick! And, and get to what you are doing. Better stop thinking. Don't punish your mind for nothing. Stop thinking. First things first. Stop thinking. Clarity. Say after me, I receive grace to set definite goals for my life write a quick assignment you do write three go and look for three people that represent the areas they must be believers they must be believers three people that give a picture of what you know god wants you to do whether in ministry not very high raise your standard high if you want to own a tv ministry like which one for instance, you can say like TBN, like God TV, like KICC, for instance. You say, God has told me this, my hand will count money. There's one song. You see this, my hand, you. Many people even count it. You go count dollars. You would dance that thing and never count any dollar. It's wonderful. Do the motions of the church, motivate yourself. But after that, go and sit down even mention naira mention dollars okay. hallelujah set a standard when i look at ministry there are people that inspire me i read their books it doesn't mean you will receive everything there will be excesses here and there in their lives jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get are you listening to me there are many people whose mindsets in certain areas i don't quite agree with stop criticizing just get what you can get and go hallelujah set goals so that you can know when you set goals you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals don't just set blind goals set goals there are ministries that we as a ministry I've, I've taught I carried the heads of department the ministers and we went to Koza Abuja why because I love and I respect their excellence do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that because I'm not failing in ministry 
I know I'm anointed. But you must humble yourself. I'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide. There are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend. They, I know it. I see it sometimes in visions. See, celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. There are people who bless my life. I don't hide it. And we took all the leaders and we went to Koza. We went in the morning. We sat down there. Our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning. Don't ask questions why we are excellent. And this is not, this is old wine. I'm telling you, this is old wine. You wait and see what God is doing. They have adopted principles. For instance, I know that Ilorin and Ibadan is the place of music people. Is that true? Some of you musicians don't even know. You think it's, it's Samaru. That's the problem. Come. He was over at my place today and I was doing discussions with him. It was him that told me about the lady. How many of you like his singing? Ilorin people again. You see that? And I was, I was asking him a question. I said, tell me about the music in Ilorin. And he said, ah, the people there, most of them like money, 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 but they are excellent. They are competent. I said, ah. I said, tell me more. And I was just listening. He said, tell me more. I said, all right, God bless you. Every time I challenge the decorations department, they don't just bring some of these designs off heart. They sit down and look at certain things. The protocol, almost every department. And if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department, and an idea of a picture, it means you are misleading your people. You do anything you want to do today. You do, thank God there are ministers there to supervise you. When you are going out, of course, it's our job to bring you back. Question. Who inspires you? Yourself. That's why you are still where you are. You are the only one who inspires yourself. You don't have any figure that inspires you. Out of the many mentors in my life, my greatest mentor is Jesus Christ. And I, no, no, no. I know many of you will not. Jesus inspires me. Boy, when I study the Bible, sometimes I just put it on my head. I say, Baba Jesus. I just laugh. I mean, this guy was something else. He inspires me. Who inspires you? Show me the person that inspires you and I'll tell you why you are in your life. For many of us, we are surrounded by people who are failures in life. It doesn't mean you should hate them, but they cannot be your role models. It's out of pity many of us look up to some people. I won't let a failure inspire me. I won't criticize him. I will love him. But I know he will not help me to get where I want to go to. There are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you. It's just out of pity. We have been here since secondary school. You want to read. After you read for two hours, you say, I beg, Jare, Jesus is coming soon. You say, not true. Or you just close your book. And you keep getting zeros, 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 zeros. And you'll be wondering, zeros. The best student in your class is reading. You go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading. Because every time he's tired, he sees, did you have that kind of thing in secondary school? Where you have the best two students. When somebody's tired, he looks at the person who took first last semester. See, I'm not going anywhere. We must read together provoke one another. I'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit, but you must who challenges you? I don't mean makes you envious challenges you. I taught the worship team one time, I told them, I said, acknowledge those who are better than you. Hallelujah. Acknowledge it. When you look and say, Selena can hold this camera. If I hold this camera and you watch the video, you will stone me. Hallelujah. I wasn't trained to do it. When they were being trained, I was doing something else. So I'm not that competent. So if I come and see Selena and say, well, is it not this simple thing? Mm -mm. Celebrate greatness when you see it. Hallelujah. You will now see these worship people and say, ah, ah, I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, ah, ah, worship team have accepted her. They are trying. No, why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. 
Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word and change. Let me tell you something. 95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing, we see you kill. He has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. What you have is good, but it's not enough. Hear me. You are a book writer. You wrote your book. It's only you and your family members that know. That tells you that your information is insufficient. You launched it in your church. They piled the book for you there. Now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it. You were not ready. You just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense. Later on, after two years, you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote. Principles that don't work. They are not even work. The best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message. At that point, nobody can contend it. If I tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles, I tell you the truth, if I can prove it, you will be surprised to see how people will believe it. There are many people talking things they cannot prove. I learned this early enough. So I made sure that I'm the guinea pig. There are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise, you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says, buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Oh God, Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything, but I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with books and tapes and challenge yourself that you are going to change your life. Not just sermons. Books by people who have proven track record. Number five, apply these principles diligently. Apply them. The end of every knowledge is application. Whatever you do not apply cannot help you. I'm telling you this. Many of us know so many things, but we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say, you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought hundred people would come. Say, determination, diligence. And the person is already weary. Go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six, be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. 
it takes discipline to keep practicing these principles even if the result is not showing now you have been tightening the result is not showing now you've been reading books that continue continue don't stop pastor chris will say keep saying it don't stop talking it let me add to it keep doing it don't stop doing it who is like him he's the lion and the lamb he's seated on the throne see this is not a special number mountains bow down every ocean roll to the Lord of Lord. just listen to me I'm ministering to your spirit who is this God he's the lion and the lamb seated on the throne the Bible says the mountains keep like lambs in his presence mountains bow down Every ocean roll to the Lord of Lords. That is the one we serve. Mighty. It's great and mighty. Full of majesty. And he brought you here to change your life. He brought you to do something in your life that no power in existence can stop. It is within his ability to create the change. Hallelujah. Listen. Many of you do not know. See, this is the ninth month and God is birthing a lot of things. It was in this month I began to talk about the miracle service from the first week. For as soon as Zion travails, she will put forth a son. All of the teachings that we have been building upon, sharing the secrets of the kingdom to prepare us for the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. Empre toko pa yada kaba, sote tete kepata, membro toske bali kata, shemeke ta yabo kosopa. I bless the divine upon the fountain of the spirit. Let there be a breaking and opening of spirituality. I'm calling you higher, say at the Spirit of God. I'm calling you climb up that mountain, say at the Spirit of God. Climb up that mountain where your eyes will see clearer. Climb up that mountain. Climb up that mountain. Feast upon the secrets of the spirit. Feast upon the secrets of the spirit, said the Lord. Feast upon the secrets of the spirit. There is a path that no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Majestic is his presence. Hallelujah.
First Thessalonians 2 verse 8. First Thessalonians 2. I'm sorry, not eight. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, I would have come to you. It is my desire. For you to experience my presence. He said, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that blessing would have come to you. Wherefore, that healing, that breakthrough would have come to you. He said, I desire, but Satan hindered us. Tonight is a prayer meeting. We will pray. Wherefore, I would have brought the breakthrough for the family. Wherefore, I would have opened you up to certain realms of grace and power. He said, but Satan, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that genotype would have changed by now. Wherefore, that act of witchcraft and divination over families and territories would have been addressed. He said, but Satan hindered us. Let me tell you something. The kingdom of God is hidden in laws and mysteries. And all through scriptures, you will find the operation of the kingdom hidden in stories, experiences, parables. They are a revelation of the patterns, the workings of the kingdom. It takes illumination. It's called the spirit of revelation. And then your eyes are open to see beyond the story. And then you begin to see the construction. The build up, the character and the operation of the kingdom. And when you understand it. You have those keys. Then you will command power in this territory. And this is what we seek to transfer. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom week after week this is our project to unveil unto you the secrets of the kingdom because when you find it then you will be able to operate in mastery in the last one or two months we have been unveiling a lot of things opening you up to the spiritual dimension of life all of the teachings have been a build up upon one and another to open you up to the spiritual dimension the bible says they know not neither do they understand they grope in darkness confusion and as a result the earth is out of course have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes and the remedy is an unveiling. This is why we value the presence of the Holy Spirit so much. The body of Christ knows a lot. They know a lot of Bible stories. But insight into the truth to understand the operation of the kingdom is what is deficient. says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of thy heart keep them in the midst of the heart he said they are life to those who find them 
health to their flesh. It will take your understanding of spiritual things. It is understanding that will reduce Satan to become nothing in your life. Hallelujah. Wherefore we would have come to you. So there are many things that desire to come into your life. Breakthrough. Blessings. Increase. He said, but what happened? Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. Hindered the blessing. Hindered the lifting. Hindered your insight, access into the deep things of the spirit, but Satan hindered us. Hallelujah. And tonight we have come to call the devil a liar. We have come to open up the two lead gates that you will step into certain things that have a time in giving. Please take note of what is happening tonight. There are healings already happening. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are going to be praying. This night we will be confronting the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight we will pursue. We will overtake. And we will recover all. Many people have taught all kinds of junk messages. Look at me. Wickedness is real. Don't let anybody fool you with any sugar-coated message. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah. Why do you need the power of the Holy Ghost? Because there are giants on every mountain. And the Bible says how all inspiring are your ways. It said through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Psalm 66 verse 3. Wherefore, by now you would have been lifted. By now your family would have risen to a level. You would have stepped into another dimension. But Satan hindered us. Wherefore you would have been walking in mighty levels of grace by now. Your destiny helpers have desired to come to you. But Satan hindered them. Wherefore, your life partner would have come into your life. You would have been happily married with dignity and honor, but Satan hindered them. Wherefore, that job, that opening, but Satan hindered us. This is Paul the Apostle speaking. I desire to come to you. I know the things I carry and I know that if I meet you, you will never be the same. So Satan hindered us. Wherefore, you would have been coming to, for Koinonia years ago, but Satan hindered you. Wherefore, your loved ones would have been here tonight with all your efforts to bring them, but Satan. I need you to know that Satan is determined to frustrate your Christian experience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is determined. He will use every spiritual arsenal within his control to see that he frustrates your spiritual life. Therefore, it will take understanding of the operations of the kingdom to triumph over him. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God. He said, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let not my enemies triumph over me. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Tonight, he's restoring everything. In obedience to Christ. Satan has hindered a lot of people. Listen. We have been explaining these things. Right from the teaching. Give me this mountain. That every time you arrive at that mountain. There are giants. Hear me. There are forces of darkness. Stationed across the earth. To ensure. 
that men do not rise. Zechariah chapter 1. This is a month of breakthrough. Something must happen in your life. I know that somebody believes this word. There are many who will sit down there and keep being cynical and watch others testify. Said they heard the word like we did, but the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Zechariah 1 from verse 17 down. Okay. Cry yet saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, My city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. The moment he, it speaks about breakthrough, what happens? Next verse. Can you give us from Amplified? Is it possible? Please, Amplified. Then I lifted up my eyes and behold, four horns. Immediately he told the prophet, this is your prophetic destiny. This is what should happen to you. He said, now lift up your eyes and see what has been hindering you. He said, I lifted up my eyes and I beheld four horns. Amplified says, symbols of strength. Next verse. And I said unto the angel who talked with me, what are these? I've not been taught in church that there are horns that can lift people. They have deceived me that you just confess and enter your destiny. This is strange. I've not been taught. What are these? Many of, of you have been deceived that all it takes is just to laugh and you just jump in and enter your destiny. All it takes is to just pack five naira and put an envelope and come and drop it. Or that they pour a little dot of oil. Let me tell you the truth. There is more to the operation of the kingdom than this. He said, what are these? It is strange. I've not been taught. I've no, I wasn't given this insight that after a promise, there is a contention in the spirit to bring its deliverance. Most people just stop in verse 17. He said, now that I've told you your prophetic destiny, lift your eyes, let's tackle the resistance. What is this that you see? If it's raining, let them come in. Please come in. Sit anywhere. On the ground, on the altar, anywhere. Just find a place and sit down. Tonight is a serious meeting and we are going to pray. Listen. And he answered me. He said, these are what? The four horns of powers which have scattered Judas. Rob men of their praise. Rob men of their testimony. Judah means praise. Praise is an effect of a testimony. The well-doing of the Lord. Please come in. Come in everybody. Sit down anywhere. Come and sit here. Wherever you can find, just sit down. There are spaces all around. Ushers, please help them. I need everybody's attention. Are you following me now? He said they have scattered what? Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Tonight we will pray. Oh, that devil that is holding your destiny. See, no matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. Is that true? No matter how mad he is, he can do stupid things and they say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, the Bible says he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Look up. Every promise in the Bible requires contentions in the spirit for you to actualize it. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been released to you. There are more seats. Stand anywhere. No devil will stop you this night. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. Sing it one more time. Yeah. Let hope, let it rise. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Please follow me tonight. It says, Then the Lord showed me what? 
four smiths or workmen, one for each enemy of the horn. He showed me four carpenters. He said, now I've shown you the horn. There are certain people I am going to send to you. He calls them carpenters. This is your promise. This is your destiny. Between you and your destiny, there are four horns. And the job of those horns is to scatter your life, scatter your finances, scatter your anointing, scatter your prayer life. He said, but I sent four carpenters. One for each horn. He said to beat it down. 21. Then said I, What are these horns or smith? So Satan sends his horn. See, let me tell you something. Go to verse 19. He said, These are four horns and four powers. Their job is to wreck your destiny. Are you listening to me? They are, they are patient. These are spirit entities scattered around the face of the earth. And every time they see anything that looks like growth and progress in your family, they are the ones, they watch to see when your sister gets pregnant. Their job is to scatter. He said to scatter Judah. Judah is the place of praise. Israel is the place of promise. 21 then said i what are these horns coming to do he says and he said these are the horns or powers that scattered judah so that what no man will lift his head there are forces hear me koinonia there are forces of darkness positioned by the powers of darkness he said wherefore i desire to come to you but Satan hindered us. So that no man will lift up his head. They are scattered around our villages. They are scattered around ministries. So that certain ministries cannot lift up their heads. So that certain destinies cannot lift up their heads. That's the job. Every time anyone in your family is about to rise, they contend in your academics in your finance the moment you begin to pray after one week your prayer life dies the horns the moment you have faith and say lord i trust you after three days something pushes you down are you following me now you enter a relationship two weeks something just happens and scatters everything who are these he said these are four horns they have been stationed and every time they see you lifting your head, their job is to bring you down. It's in your Bible. It says, so that no man will lift up his head. Many ministries do not know the powers of darkness that try to tie them down. Are you listening to me? The moment a ministry starts blossoming, the men of God are carried away with money and prosperity and increase and ministrations. They forget that there are four horns. Let the Lord just declare a prophecy over your life and you will see these horns rise. The moment they declared, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, all hell broke loose. He said, I desire to give you prosperity. I desire to give you increase. But there are four horns. There are four horns. There are many families represented here. What you are seeing in your dreams and visions and what is happening in your life is different. Between that dream and the manifestation are four horns. They are gates. Are you following me tonight? I came to preach my heart because we are going to pray. Four horns. You go, you go and apply for a job. They are ready to respond to you. Three days later, something comes up without any explanation. See, 
Hear me, believers. If you don't take charge of your destiny and apply the keys of the kingdom, you may remain forever and you will not lift up your hands. Thank you for lifting. 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 My head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. There are many ministers who struggle and struggle. They preach, they suffer, they go and do a lot of publicity. People come and get healed and go. They don't, these are four horns. The moment they pay your father's salary, everybody in the family starts becoming mysteriously sick. Without explanation, until that one naira finish, you marry a man who was loving and caring. Suddenly, he becomes a Dracula. Four horns. Tonight, we have come under an apostolic and prophetic atmosphere to confront the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me tell you, Satan can bow. Are you hearing me? Satan can bow. You must get angry in your spirit. Don't just sit and watching others. Forget about what is happening and concentrate. There's no space. Sit around. Find somewhere and sit. Tonight when it's time to pray. I don't want to see you looking at me. Pack your wig. Pack your wivon. Keep it one side. We are going to pray this night. Hallelujah. He said, but these smiths or workmen have come to what? There are men that have been anointed to terrorize this horn. Are you saying that word? He said, see, he said, but these smiths, these carpenters have come to terrorize the horn. He didn't say, it's not just to defeat them, to terrorize them. There are people Satan is afraid of. See, Pastor Jakes made a statement. Look at me. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is this error in the body. There are two errors. One is the error of saying, see, everybody, I have the same access to God. Are you hearing me? I have the same access to God. There is nothing there. No man of God is special than this. Or the one that men of God make themselves semi-gods. Both are wrong. But let me tell you something clearly this night. Not every human being is a human being. The anointing has changed some people. The Bible says there are many bodies. Some are terrestrial. Some are celestial. They may look like you. The ability to recognize that difference is what will take you out of certain things. Are you hearing me? We are equal in Christ. But we are not equal in call and office and anointing. You must realize this. The Bible says there are some people that have been anointed to terrorize them and cause them to be panic stricken. Look at the horns that are terrorizing others. But the Bible says God calls some people and says, You, I just call you, come and become a terrorist. It's an election of grace. It's in your Bible. This is not error. It's not because they pray more. It is an office. an office to terrorize the works of darkness see let me tell you this night whatever power hear me i'm speaking under the unction of the lord whatever power that is responsible for holding any area of your life except god is not the god of heaven it must give up on you this night i said it must give up on you this night I don't care. I speak under a prophetic and apostolic unction as one of these privileged carpenters. If I be sent of God, I speak to you. Every horn that is responsible for terrorizing your life, it will bow this night. He said, 
but I have sent carpenters. They are around, scattered over the earth. The only problem is that we have not trained our spirits to recognize them. Jesus went to certain cities, they saw him until he ascended to heaven and they said, is this the man that has been among us? See, let me tell you, one of the greatest revelations you have in this life is that some people have been called. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's called an election of grace. I didn't call myself. See, let me tell you something. When the Lord showed me the vision for ministry, hear me. I was standing in a tower and I saw an endless sea of people. Very oppressed people. Messed up by Satan. It was a whole generation of people. And I saw them crying. And while they came close, I was hearing the sounds of their cry. And they were blaming me in the vision. And I said, what is wrong? And they said, there is no food and no water. Suddenly, it occurred to me that I was holding in my hands the keys to the storehouse that will feed that generation. This is a vision I had. Listen to me, please. Hallelujah. And when that happened, I told them, who is the cause? Who is the reason why you are the way you are? And they said, you are the one. Suddenly, compassion fell on me. And I said, I'm going to come out right now. I, I got to that tower. I was trying to hide from somebody. That was when I looked through the mirror and I saw that thing. It was fear and timidity that made me to run like Gideon to go and hide in the vision. But the people were telling me that we are dying here and you are the one who is holding the keys to the storehouse. They said no food and no water. These two things. Hallelujah. And I was determined that I was going to go out. The moment I opened the door, because I was afraid that I was alone. When I opened the door, there was a giant person that stood. And he said, hold my hands. We will go together. He's called the Holy Spirit. This is the whole idea behind the things we do with the Holy Spirit. People have criticized that we are emphasizing the... See, let me tell you. Every great vision comes under fire and criticism because people do not understand. The Bible says they know not. I'm taking time to explain to you. This call, there are people who have been called as carpenters. You may die in a place without recognizing because you see everybody and you think they are celestial or they are terrestrial. There are some people that certain graces have elected them. Hallelujah. In one other vision, I was in a whole city and I found out that all the hospitals and the clinics were closed. And I was crying because there were people that were sick. I said, what is all this? What is going on here? And I had a voice. He said, go and heal them. That was the end. So when people hear that HIV positive is changing to negative, or when people hear that genotypes are changing, rather than finding out, they keep criticizing and castigating. We don't announce any miracle here without verification. He said, but these smiths or these workmen have been sent to terrorize these homes. That's why their lives are not normal. They are not normal human beings. They don't live like normal human beings. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know the burden of carrying a prophetic agenda for a generation. It will change you. I don't have a social life. I have lost many things that many people have. You do not know what it means to come under the influence of a divine mandate. I see a lot of people jumping and smiling. I'm apostle, I'm prophet. I want to open ministry and I say, oh dear. Day and night you are under fire of all sorts. But he that endures to the end.
Hallelujah. He said to cast out the horns or powers of the nations who have lifted their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. There are horns, brothers and sisters, that are responsible for the way your father behaves, for the way your mother behaves, for the way your loved ones behave. You have tried counseling. You have tried psychology. It didn't work. They are called horns. But the Bible says, My head has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and you have anointed me with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Corinthians 6 verse 9. Are you there? What did I say? 16, I'm sorry. 16, verse 9. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. One to read it again. For a great door and effectual is opened up to me. And there are many, a great door is opened. The door of marriage has been opened. The door of healing has been opened. He said, but there are how many? But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. He said, no man can shut it. And there are carpenters that have been sent to enforce that thing. Do you know what? Let me tell you something. We are not the only carpenters. You are here because you are one of those carpenters too. This is our mission. Our mission is not to become great men of God, but to make you a terrorist in the kingdom of darkness. See, it is not everyone, hear me, that is afraid of Satan. Are you hearing me? It's not everyone that is afraid of death. It's not everyone that is afraid of sickness. Some people have seen how cheap Satan is and he's aware. Hallelujah. That knowledge comes through an understanding of the operation of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. There are many people who do not know. Listen, I want to tell you something. If you do not know the laws that govern the kingdom, it can be costly. Are you hearing me? Longevity is not a mistake. Longevity is not a product of going to church. There are kingdom principles that bring forth longevity. Divine health is not a mistake. Divine health is not a product of the anointing. Divine health is from the body of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Anointing comes to get away the demon spirits that are responsible for bringing that. He said by his stripes. He didn't say by the oil. We have misapplied a lot of spiritual laws. Authority against witches and wizards is not the issue of uh -uh. there are kingdom principles and this is what we seek to share. Greatness does not happen by magic. Many of you are asking, why is the devil disturbing me? Are you still asking that question? When Satan followed Jesus to the wilderness, was patient for one month and ten days until Jesus finished fasting. What makes you think that the devil will just look at you and say, oh, I understand you are anointed. But it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to look at the devil eyeball to eyeball and say I am one of those carpenters <laughs> hallelujah there are some of you who don't sleep when you close your eyes you are oppressed I was one of those people the bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field tonight we have come to call the devil a liar I've come to speak to you that there is an authority. 
There are seven things that redemption brings unto men. All of them must be at work in your life. The Bible says, worthy is the lamb to receive blessings, riches, honor. These are all the things he has received and he has given you. Seven. And it must be at work in your life. Hallelujah. Who are these horns? Who are these horns that have stood against little children? Who are these horns? You are aware of the testimony of the man who came here and who was healed, I think, during one of the services or thereabout. He was sleeping in the night. Somebody appeared to him in a dream. Remember the story? With big syringe injected this man with hiv virus and he woke up physically with the virus that devil is a liar come on now years ago i used to pray for barren people and they were not healed they didn't give birth it disturbed me and i went back i said lord what what is it then the lord told me barrenness is not sickness it's an oppression it doesn't require healing there is a spirit the spirits come and they create what we call fibroid. Fibroid is the baby of these spirits in the womb of people. That's why women have miscarriages in the night. Why don't they have miscarriages in the daytime? But you are carpenters. See? I look forward to testimonies. Where will he, somebody will say, Ah, I heal the sick and I raise the dead. Not Pastor Jakes did this. Uh uh. You be the carpenters. You are not falling down for nothing. You are not falling down to prove we are anointed. God is in a serious business of working on you. Say, I'm one of the carpenters. Say it, I'm one of the carpenters. Yes, financial carpenters apostolic carpenters one of my life's goal is to break the back of poverty in the church is one of it i hate the effect of poverty on many families more ladies have entered prostitution they didn't come to meet you how much do you have Many people have been messed up. There are some of you now. You want to marry. But you cannot get married. Because of the finance. And some of you are hoping. That one day. I will get a job of 10,000. And then I will get married. Calculate it. By your, do you to judge. But when those that God has sent to bless you, they can come in one day. He said, your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Do you believe this? You are going to get angry this night. This night we are going to pray. I'm just sharing with you scriptures. The Bible says, Daniel, in chapter 10, remember... How that Daniel was praying and fasting. Wanting to get an understanding. And the Bible says the moment is said from the very first day. Daniel 10. You start reading from verse 5 down to 11 verse 1. When he was coming the Bible says the prince of Persia. Withstood the angel 20 and 1 day. The prince of Persia withstood him. Hallelujah. The prince of Persia withstood him. Until he kept praying. The moment that embargo was lifted, the angel said, Now I am come to give thee understanding. One of the chief princes came to hell. Tonight there is divine backing of the angelic. As we pray, there will be things happening in the realm of the spirit. Yokes of darkness that will be broken. This is pre-miracle service.
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain. That's what God will do tonight. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Sing it one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. I've shared it here. Before we would start Koinonia, listen, I realized that there is a secret to increase and growth. And I knew that there were powers over territory that kept ministries down. I've shared this again. From the roundabout of Chicken Republic, I started walking there till aviation, commanding the forces to bow commanding principalities and power and then the city opens up before i go for administration in any city i speak to the principalities they know my voice see let me teach you something there are principalities there are powers there are rulers there are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are different strata of of darkness but the Bible says you have been exalted above thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Both in this realm, this world, and in the world to come. So you command them to bow. Hallelujah. As our prayer department begins to pray, they speak over the weak. And an open heavens. And you are there in your house. You don't even know what carries you from your house. You are still complaining and insulting us, yet you are coming. Because the heavens are open. There's an army rising up. You are that prophetic army. There's an army rising up. I tell you, you are that army. There's an army rising. Tonight, every one of you is going to represent not just yourself, but even your families. Hear me? Your families have been praying for a savior. Say, we can't die like this. And God said, come for koinonia. You, you, let God find a carpenter. Hallelujah. I just came, today I just came, I've been at home. I needed to go and visit the house. As soon as I stepped in, in the night, that night as I slept, in a dream, the Lord showed me everything that was wrong. And I got up the next day while they were sleeping. Hallelujah. I got anointing oil, poured it inside water, and carried the bucket. I took my bare foot and I was walking around. And I was commanding the forces in that territory to bow. I said, an ambassador is in town. This is what we are teaching you. Hallelujah. An ambassador is in town. I went and looked at my mother's poultry. I said, I command increase. See, if you know the office that you stand in in Christ, you will not take it for granted. The Bible says, as I hear you say before my ears, so will I do. Realize you are not ordinary. You are not the one looking for help. And if there is any need for help, 
we will grant you the help here by the grace of God and empower you to go back when you see things that are not working rejoice because you are here you carry the backing of heaven your job is to legislate your job is to legislate the bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers hallelujah praise the lord an ambassador you must realize this so that you don't just stand at home or in your offices everything that is going wrong start blaming yourself and say now everybody's lamenting if there is nobody i am an ambassador say it i'm an ambassador an ambassador this is why god is bringing you and you are going to pray as you pray first for yourself and then through the fire of the holy ghost you will dislodge powers over your life and then you will see testimonies rolling in suddenly you will find out that certain insights you have been struggling to get suddenly there is an open heaven your ministry or your fellowship takes another level as if satan does not exist hallelujah nobody ever came to jesus christ hear me after he went 40 days and 40 nights satan came to withstand him because jesus wanted to come to the people like paul but satan withstood him when he defeated satan suddenly on the mountain people started coming along the water side people said, what happened Powers were dislodged this night hear me you are not praying for healing you are confronting the gates of darkness rise up on your feet everybody rise up on your feet listen 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 i want you to know that heaven is backing you tonight are you hearing what i'm saying say heaven is backing me say it, heaven is backing me because we are going to pray now and by the power of the holy spirit i tell you there will be an eruption of testimonies after this night's meeting you will know that the things that have been happening around your life and your family they are not as ordinary as they look you are the holy ghost oh. number one hallelujah you're going to pray and say in the name of jesus i confront gates that are stopping the finances the finances grace that are making your family members not to be titers grace that are making them not to be givers lift your voice Financial days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hold on. This prayer must be serious this night. Please let's have two of our school of ministry students, two prayer band. Benga, come. Kenny, come. Go on one of the mic. Our school of ministry students, where are you? Are you not? Tolu, come. Quickly, two, three. Well, you, it's okay. You push, go and share the mic. Stand behind. When I say pray, if you are not praying, you will go back to your seat. You are not out for jamboree. We are going to pray. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Four horns. There are four prayer points we have. The Bible says they were sent to one. This finance thing, you are going to pray it. Lift your voice and pray. Listen, 
The Bible says, hear me. The Bible says, there is no man, hear me, that will enter into a man's life and, and spoil the good except he first find the strong man. He said, and I will give you the keys of it. Hallelujah. Hear me. Many of us will be surprised what will happen this night. Prayer point number two. You are going to declare and say, Satan, the Bible says through the greatness of thy power, right now, I command those forces bow. Lift your voice and pray. Bow. Bow. Principalities, bow. says when you catch a thief listen please when a thief steals your property and you catch that thief he won't bring back what he stole he said he will restore sevenfold this is what the bible says sevenfold you're going to pray see listen the lord is showing me in i'm in a vision right now and the lord is showing me angels holding baskets hear me but the baskets are empty. Listen. Please follow me. 
there is a prophetic atmosphere here. There are empty baskets. And I'm wondering, and the Lord is ministering to me. He's saying this basket will be full of the blessings that are due God's people. See, si hear me. Si he said, and I will restore. Si hear me. Canker worms can si eat years of si people's life. So you are growing older, but nothing is happening. But this night, hey, I don't know about you, but I came to Koinonia. I'm placing a demand. Everything hey! you know, Satan took. I'd like you to call it back and say, Restore. ministered something Restore. to me. We are still praying on the third point. Restore. The Lord said, Restore. we should call back opportunities Restore. that were either missed or wasted. Restore. Are you hearing me? There are some of you, some circles came into your life. Restore. Either by carelessness it passed. Let me tell you, Restore. it's only in this realm that you count time. In the realm of the spirit, you can call time back. Hear me? I don't care what opportunity you missed. Restore. Whether it was an opportunity for marriage, Restore. for job, Restore. right now, I want you to call back Restore. that opportunity. It will come back. Yes.
Some of you are tired. Rest on. But hold on. Rest on. See, hear me. You never know how powerless Satan is until you engage in prayer. Satan will keep opening his eyes until you pray. When you pray, the devil will shrink and you see how powerless he is. Hallelujah. Now, one last prayer point. We'll add one more. You are going to confront the gates over your family. See, don't let anybody fool you that there are no gates. Let me tell you something. Some of you are the last card that God has to use over your family. If you don't do anything about it, don't think God brought you here just to waste your time. Listen. See me. Listen, listen. If you truly love your family members, effectual prayer is not just by shouting it is the seriousness put your heart in this prayer many of you as you pray you will begin to see vision see hear me listen let me tell you something listen listen I, see we don't kill people in this place but let me tell you god is a god of mercy but he's a god of judgment are you hearing what I'm saying? There are certain horns. We don't care who these horns are. Unfortunately, sometimes, as this power is taking some human beings become victims, we don't kill people. But whatever it will take for the glory of your family to rise, you will pray it is not. Lift your voice.
Hallelujah. Hear me. The Bible says, and that night, Jacob wrestled with this. He said, I will not let you go. And the Bible says, when he touched his thigh, he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob, which means a cheat and a supplanter. He said, you are called Israel. For as a prince, you have fought with God and prevailed. And the Bible says, hear me. He says, and the sun rose. And he called that place Peniel. Hallelujah. I've told you as much, hear me. I've told you as much as possible. Please invite your loved ones for the miracle service. You don't hear me talk like this. We are only responding to the things that the Holy Spirit, if they refuse, no problem. For God will do a work in this place. Hallelujah. We'll take one more prayer point. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for this ministry. Hear me. I'm like a pregnant woman right now. Because I know when we step into seasons. God has his way. In the last three to four months. That's why you find out that you don't find me outside. I have been praying and preparing. Birthing new and mighty things in the spirit. We are stepping into a dimension. See for when you are faithful with what God gives you. He said he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to the ankle. And when he saw that you were faithful. He measured a thousand cubits. Many of you are already sensing that. There are newer levels of grace. You can see that the unction upon the house is not what it used to be. Yes. This is ushering season. Oh, For when God wants to bless you, he will first increase the anointing, then enlarge your sphere of influence. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Hallelujah. If you love this ministry, I'd like you in the next few minutes to pray your life out. Listen. You are going to pray for the ministers. See the way ministers are falling around like leaves. Immorality. All kinds of things. I've said it. Any man can fall from any height. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you love us, pray for us. Pray for us. We are going to pray for this ministry. We are going to say, Lord, let a dimension of grace, hear me, hear the prayer point, and fire spread from this place and around this nation. God is already doing great things through our teachings. I cannot describe to you what is happening around. The media can tell you best the mighty and terrible things that God is doing. Some of you have gone back and you have become mighty agents of change. Even you, you are surprised at yourself. This is what we are training you to become. And hear me, when you are praying for the ministry, you are praying for yourself. The ministry is not Joshua Selman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to say, Lord, together, as a family, nobody will rise and leave another. Are you hearing me? There will not be a few men of God rising, growing in grace. Hear me? There are certain things God has given us as a ministry. Number one is the presence of God. Number two is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The love of God. God has given us influence. God has given us prosperity. We are going to pray that the strongholds that attempt to raise their heads. Listen. There will never come a time where we will not have testimonies here. The vision must speak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to command and say every force that will want to stop the vision from speaking, it will speak in your own life. It will speak 
if truly God has called us, something should come upon your life that you will become a peasant of provision. Lift your voice and pray for ear. <laughs> of the ministry our school of ministry God is raising mighty mighty men of power in all spheres not just ministry you are going to pray for our students you are going to pray for the missions hallelujah you are going to pray for koinonia you are going to pray for all of the things that we are doing you are going to say Lord not one sick body will come and not be healed not one oppressed person you're going to pray for grace to stand criticism grace to stand persecution grace to remain faithful grace to remain grateful grace to remain humble I want to do something prophetic this night. Hallelujah. One of the things God has given us is the spirit of dominion. You know what dominion is? Dominion means to legislate the counsel of God in any sphere, Satan notwithstanding. And among the many things that will happen to you tonight, I'm going to pray for you. 
that everything we stand for, your life must represent it. See, if you do not represent what we stand for, we are fake. It means we are lying. It means we are faking power somewhere. If we are healing the sick, you should heal the sick. You must not be in ministry. If we are humble and you are arrogant, there is something wrong with the transference of spirits. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want you to believe, my brothers. Believe. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please be careful with the fans. Father, you didn't send us to waste people's time. You didn't send us to be noisemakers. My God, I am praying this night. Every power, every force against any area of your life, this night, if I be sent as a servant of God, if God has ordained us as one of these carpenters, I pray right now, those powers bow Bow! Bow! Emma. Bow! Emma. Every power hindering your marriage in this place, hear me, or the marriage of your loved ones, this night I release you in the name of Jesus. Emma. Everything stopping your breakthrough. Breakthrough. As surely as the God of heaven lives. Between this night and next Friday, I command unbelievable breakthrough. Receive it. Receive it. I invoke it from the heavens with the backing of Elohim. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Every close heaven in this place, whether it's as a result of non tithing or mistakes or whatever, I don't care what is responsible. Every heaven that is closed in this place, right now, this night, I pray, let the heavens be open over you. The heavens be open over you. Let the heavens be open over you. Hallelujah. This month, there are three things I'm speaking into your life now. Listen, number one is authentic unction. Listen, number two is favor that you cannot imagine listen number three is honor receive these three four blessings receive it receive power power to heal the sick power to cast out devil hear me in the name that is above all names whatever bows to us here let it bow to you in the name of the lord jesus whatever answers to us let it answer to you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah I want to pray for your family. Hear me, enough is enough this Zipa, night. Ta, 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 ta. Lift your hands. Super. Super. Ba, ta, ba, ra, ka, your families will never believe Zipa, you or the God you serve until there is an evidence. 
I pray, my God, that evidence of breakthrough that will compel families to know that you are at work. Let there be a release now. Let there be a release now. Let the angel of the Lord go across every state, every city. I instruct it. Every city. Saria, Abuja, Lagos, Calabar, Kodiste, Jos, angels, in the name of Jesus, go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Go and confirm breakthroughs. Give testimonies. 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 So that they will know that your God is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is instructing me to do something dangerous. Please take off your shoes and stand on your feet. This is not diabolic, please. Don't go and start criticizing us and talking nonsense. Listen, something will come upon your life this night. Please listen. Listen. I don't do stupid things just because people are doing I don't have money. The Bible says, hear me. It says, anywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, it has been given to you. I want to pray, hear me. Many of you do not know the mystery of what is happening, but I want you to believe. You will be amazed. Because I see an angel of the Lord, pure red from head to toe. Never seen, listen, I've never seen this angel of the Lord. And this is what he was telling me. That there is an impartation and a transference. Hear me? The influence we enjoy as a ministry is not a mistake. Are you hearing me? God has honored us and taken us to where we cannot merit. I want it to come upon your life this night. Lift your hands. Many of you will receive mighty impartations. Hear me. You will see things answering. See, your Christianity will have results. Father, I stand as your servant tonight. Under the instruction that you have given me. My God, there is a spirit upon this ministry. An operation of the Holy Ghost. The operation of dominion. An inexplainable influence. At the count of three. My God, let every feet upon this ground receive that anointing and demonstrate it practically. Thank you, Father. One, two, three. Receive it. Take 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 it. Receive it. The spirit of dominion. The action of kingdom influence. Let the crowd open up for you. Let the crowd open up for you. Let the earth answer to you. Hallelujah. One more prayer. God has given us inexplainable 
kingdom wealth and prosperity please lift your hands you need it I honestly want to pray from my heart that your financial heavens will be open in a way and I'm going to pray my God and my king I pray in the name that is above all names you have called and you have sent me Lord if I be your servant at the count of three let an unction of inexplainable wealth let it come upon your people at the count of three one two three take it take it Take it! Take it! A mantle of prosperity! A mantle of wealth! A mantle of finance! Do, do mighty things for the kingdom! To feed the hungry! To clothe the poor! Wipe the tears from your family. Let this anointing bring you ideas. Let it bring you opportunities. Please put back your shoes. Thank you, Jesus. Give him thanks. Yes. I see a mighty open heavens. Mighty, mighty open heavens Jesus we give you thanks Jesus we give you thanks you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you again give him thanks I assure you as surely as the Lord lives your testimonies begin right now anyone under the sound of my voice who is sick in your body whether blood disease fibroid lump in your breast in the name that is above all names we change genotypes now SS be changed to AA now AS be changed to AA now migraine headaches go in the name of Jesus demonic manifestations go now in the name of Jesus lump in the breast disappear now appendicitis go now every kind of infirmity if it has a name I command it to bow now you will return with testimonies. HIV be healed now. Every dead virus, every virus that brings death in your body, I curse it, it dies now. Hepatitis, A, B, and C, go forever now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. I want to give some people an opportunity right now to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. The number one vision that we have, please keep standing. Don't sit down yet. Please, please. I know you've tried. We need to make this great call. The Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmaments of the heavens. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. I want to give you an opportunity right now. 
There are many of you, some of you are coming for the first time. Some of you have been coming, but you have never made a genuine decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, it all starts with a decision to come back home. We do not condemn you. It doesn't matter what you have done. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord, but you have found yourself derailing in a path that is not of God. Right now, it's our joy to welcome you home. And for you to start an authentic Christian journey that will produce results. God desires to make you an ambassador. Some of you, your coming out is going to begin to be the beginning of salvation in your family. Right now, while everybody is standing, I want you to leave your seat and begin to come right now. Those who need to rededicate their hearts and those who are giving their lives. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first to come. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Come and stand. God bless you. Young, old, come and stand. Don't be emotional about it. This is a very serious decision. God bless you. Come from everywhere. Outside, inside. Please, don't let the devil take advantage of your life. Don't let the devil take advantage of your life. God is giving you an opportunity to make a lasting decision. Leave your seat. Don't allow your friend or your family member Come and stop you. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let the devil tell you it's too late. Keep coming. Keep coming. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Don't be afraid of anybody. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as many who come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Some of you are making the decision for the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. Some of you are born again. You love God, but you found yourself derailing and you want to mean business with God tonight. It doesn't matter which of the groups. I want to welcome you. We're a family here. We love you. We believe in your future and what God has to do in your life. Hallelujah. God brought you here because he wants to give you a new beginning. Lift your right hand and say this prayer after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a special number. Mean it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I come before you tonight, unable to help myself. I have heard your word and this night. I make Jesus Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. I receive remission of sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Build me. Make me an ambassador for the kingdom. Empower me to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I salute you for making this great decision. This is the greatest miracle that has happened in this place. Now you'll be having a word with Pastor Jakes. He's going to be meeting with you personally. He'll be following you up. Please and please, as much as possible. I want you to be part of. I want you to be part of this. And make sure that you show up Wednesday. By four. Please, tomorrow by four, you have a meeting with Pastor Jakes. The venue is at the Chapel of Redemption, just the book stand closed. Please, those of you who invited them, remind them and let them come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord increase you. The Lord bless you. Please follow the ushers. They will have your details. God bless you. Appreciate them. Just follow the ushers. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. In a few minutes, we'll be out of here. This is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. We want to honor you. Please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously and honorably. We want to pray for you. God bless you. Please leave your seat. Wherever you are, inside or outside, if there's a new person who is sitting, push the person and tell him, I love you too much. I love you too much. Hallelujah. Keep clapping, Koinonia. This is not your best. Thank you. The Lord brought them. For those of you who have made it a point of duty to invite people to get blessed, 
May the Lord invite your destiny help us into your life again and again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. We celebrate you. The Lord honor and increase you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will go back with unending testimonies. You will be amazed. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will bless you. We want to pray and prophesy into your life. We are anointed people, and whatever we call you, you become. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and speak those words. You are anointed. Every word you speak, the Bible says, whatsoever name Adam called them, that was the name they were. Go ahead and prophesy. Declare. We call you blessed. We bless you with a hunger for the spirit. We bless you with a hunger for prayer and the word of God. We pray that the Lord will equip you and make you a giant in the spirit. Every habit, everything that does not represent Christ in your life leaves you right now. You return as a sign and a wonder. Things will begin to fall in their place in your life. You will become a testimony even to yourself. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you once again. We love you. We honor you. Please just follow the ushers. They will greet you more warmly on our behalf. And they will give you a few informations. God bless you. Please just turn back. You have the ushers. Bless you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain